Hello, this is a progress update on TTF2 BPM. Uh, I made a GitHub page and uh, the instructions are pretty clear on it. There's other uh, commands here that you can see with uh, dash help. And uh, yeah, so far I figured out you only need libpng because it turns out that library is easy. Um, so since everyone on a Linux machine usually would have it, um, Really the only other dependency you need is free type, but I heard that's really common for other applications. So all in all, uh, I can get into it. Um, so this is my desktop directory. Um, I'm going to clone it, just that way it's fresh from the hub. So now I have it here. Now uh, I can go ahead and make it. And I have the executable here. Now, because I don't want to type dot slash, I'm going to copy it to my bin. Uh, you probably should not do that. So don't. Alright, so now if I leave this directory and type tf2, uh, ttf2, ttf2bmp, uh, it works. So I'm going to go to a font I made, a uh, font folder I made. And I got these fonts, I'm going to show off it working, plus one quirk that I'm having an issue with. In fact, I'll copy a font from my test directory. Oh, did I remove it? P. Oh, I didn't. Okay, good. Oh, shoot. I forgot to hit copy. All right, so here we have all the fonts. I'm gonna show off perfect first because that's the one that I've been doing all my tests on and now I got a bunch of other fonts to test as well. Uh, if I just type tf2, ttf2.bmp-io, I changed that. So you have to do them sequentially so that way it guarantees there's a font. Perfect.ttf and then I'll do perfect.png. Uh, it works just like that um, and I have it set up so that way it works pretty reliably most of the time if I go ahead and open it hmm, where to go perfect.png oh that's right I'm not in that directory I'm in here you can see that this is perfect. Uh, I fixed the scaling, everything is actually positioned. Um, I actually remember what the thing was for this font. Um, yeah, everything is perfect. Now, because I've been testing so much on just this font and this font alone, um, you're gonna see in these next couple fonts, uh, the main issue that I thought was unique to one problem, basically, uh, in the code, you have to set the size of the font before you start drawing it. And uh, I was having a positioning issue, and I thought I fixed it in regards to one thing, but now it just happens on all these fonts. So now that I got these fonts, I can test them out. But I'll show it off anyway, since it's on GitHub. Uh, the first font I got here is I got a bunch of uh, retro classic old computer fonts. So that's the first font. And let me add a dash T option, which will print out a info file. So that way, because if you just type this, you don't know what the width and height, and it would suck to 
pull out a bunch of stuff just to look at it and measure it yourself manually. So you can just go into it with here and you get all the data regarding it. So I know that the width and height of each spot is now 64. So if I go ahead and open this now, ibm.png, you can see there it is. And you can also see the problem I was talking about. Basically there's a top, if I go ahead and go to configure grid and do the, the font that it listed, 64, 64, everything fits inside perfectly. And I tried my best to make it relative to the top left. And that's what it's doing as far as I'm aware. But for some of these characters, they bump up a little. And I think that's also a symptom of the fact that you can see everything seems to like the top left corner. So that's the only major bug or just error that has to be fixed right now. Otherwise, if you really want you can I always do that in GIMP uh, fix it yourself but that's tedious and that's why I'm gonna be working on trying to fix that next font I forgot the dash IO. So if I end them into dos.txt, sorry, png.txt, uh, there we go. We know it's width uh, and height 64, 64. This is the same one as the other one, though, but broken because all font files seem to work differently. So I'll just move on to the next one 03. HP. So we have hp.png.txt is 38 by 56. So I can go in here. Looking good, except for this error that, as far as I know, has happened to every single uh, font I've tried here before recording. So we'll do 38 by 56. I hope. No. 38 by 56. But yeah, you get the point. I'm not going to bother. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and speed run through the rest of these fonts since I know for a fact the alignment works, except I forgot to, I didn't set the grid right on this one because I can't read. But next up, we have 04, just showing off at this point. I don't need to bother doing that, except I can show you the verbose option. Uh, this looks like a bunch of junk, but it's very important to me and probably me alone. And I was trying to condense it all into one screen. So although this is gibberish to a lot of you guys, it is important to me. Now, I can see the same details here, but having to scroll up through all of this it's kind of annoying, so that's why I did the text file thing. And uh, yeah, 48 by 64. If you don't provide a cell size, which is why I call the individual spaces, it's going to utilize the same one as this. But um, let me open it up. It's Atari. It works really well for these retro fonts, but. It does pretty decent on the more detailed ones as well. Let's see, 05. Yep, so we're getting to the more like uh, normal fonts, you could say, as opposed to all of these retro ones. And then I'm going to change the foreground color. This is in hexadecimal, but unlike in C like languages or anything, you don't need the 0x0. You just type it like this, and we'll go ahead and open it, and it works. Yeah, some of these fonts were really not made for monospace, so 
sometimes you get some really big gaps. So if you ever end up typing an I and a J next to each other, uh, it's going to get kind of thick in between there. So that's why it works really good for all these retro fonts. You know, they're more designed for it. Uh, what would be a font video without Comic Sans? Yep, that's good old Comic Sans if I ever saw it. Although I had to download some butchered one. I also noticed something here. I think it's a symptom of the alignment issue because the width and the height are using the same scale and I can't seem to figure out what I gotta scale it by so I think this is just a symptom of the same thing of the top value it's getting written by the next character over when I draw it uh, next up blood And of course, you gotta have like a, a deep red. As you can also notice, these are all PNG files. So that's all been working too. Yeah, it works surprisingly well, you know? And it's pretty low res, but you can up the resolution with some of the commands. Uh, but as of right now, those commands make it worse. Let me see what happens if I try it, because I'm curious of its state. Uh, another small update. If you type in like 128, that's going to refer to the width. If you type 128x128, that's the width and height. And if you omit the first number and leave the x, it's just the height. So, 128 height. Oh, looks like I left a printf somewhere in there. But, if you go into here, blood, and reopen it. Uh, it didn't change much because the uh, source resolution. Yeah, it's a little more jagged here, I think. But I can try and do S for the source font. That would be the defaults a height of 64. So I'll try and do that one at like twice. Yeah, yeah much more cleaner looking. So it works, but um, you probably can't tell because I don't have the grid on. I'm too lazy to show it, but the uh, actually it's pretty decent. Let me see what happens if I do uh, dash T. Blood, 85, 128. Yeah, it, since we set the height, it automatically calculated a width of 85. So, image, canvas size. And you're not letting me look at it. 85, 128. Uh, I think they're coincidentally just aligned like that because they're all caps, so it's whatever. So, yeah. Um, still, that at least proves that it's, uh, not vigoring on the font files, otherwise that'd be a pain to fix then. Uh, next up. Forgot IO. Yep. Um, pretty you know whatever again I think this one's positioned too low so it got cut off so it's more just need to fix whatever 
top left coordinate scaling issue I mentioned. And I gotta be honest, I was surprised when I was do doing this before the video, but you gotta be honest, mm -hmm. wingdings does not work. Very sad and unfortunate. Um, it's a good thing I put an assert there though, because I know specifically. But yeah, and I can go ahead and look at the to do, just so you guys can be aware of what has to be done still before I consider it done. Um, JPEG and BMP still have to be implemented. Uh, Font size, that's where I thought it was specifically with scaling. Font size is the dash S, but I can tell it's not anymore, so. Still have yet to work on that, it turns out. Um, I got the text version, but I also want to output it in a binary format. Um, and then I gotta clean up the code a little, you know. There's always room for more refactoring, and I wanna make it as clean as possible. But um, I got to fuzz it to some values. Uh, the widths and heights of some of the arguments, for example, are taken in as signed originally. But um, because they go to unsigned and stuff, and I'm still not sure what to do with that and stuff, I just check and see if the sign bit is on it. If it is, it's too big. Because that'll take care of both those big numbers and the negatives. But honestly... If you have a font size of 10 million or something, I don't know if that should be capped or not, you know, so figure out with uh, what to do with that. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Um, these are the files, plain and simple. Um, ooh, I just noticed the top thing's really screwing with this one. Unless it, no, it's just, oh no, that was because I set the, uh, the thing wrong. That was that one. But um, yeah, and the idea is now you can just draw it like a classic bitmap in whatever application you're using. Probably should have used a different one there. Yep, so that's basically all I got for this. Um, major improvements as compared to the last one, so I hope you guys found this interesting and check into the GitHub, see if there's any room for improvements and so on.